You're listening to Inclusive AF with Jackie Clayton and Katie Van Horn. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Inclusive AF podcast. This is Jackie Clayton. And this is Katie Van Horn. And we are here on this fine Friday. Friday afternoon, folks. Friday afternoon. Thank you, Jesus. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It's been a week, people. It's been a week. And we got lots to talk about with this guest we have today. So without further ado, we are going to introduce... Are uh, one of our favorites uh, who also is a podcaster. Um, so, Zach, you want to go ahead and tell everyone who you are, all the good stuff? Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Zach, non over living corporate. You know what it is? You know what I'm saying? I do this. My name is Zach. No, I'm playing. <laughs> Remix. Remix. <laughs> uh, I needed that so bad. Oh, my I'm going to start doing that. You got to, you got, you got to just, you know, wake, you got to just kind of get a little jolt of different differentiation on the podcast. Let people know as a guest in the room. <laughs> there um, you no, go. no, no, no. Uh, Zach and I'm based out of Houston, Texas. I'm a bunch of different things. Father, husband, son, brother, you know what I'm saying? Entrepreneur, tech executive. I just be moving around. I'm just outside. Awesome. Table shaker, agitator, innovator. <laughs> We like table shakers and agitators. All the things. We might, we might be those ourselves. So it Amen. All works out. <laughs> well, we are so glad you're here. Um, we actually have been trying to get this on the books. I know we had to move it a few times, but uh, glad we actually are having this conversation. And so I want to start off with just tell us about the podcast. Tell us a little bit about you know what you all do on the Living Corporate Podcast. You all know you have two fans sitting here with you, Zach. So just be prepared. Right. Okay. No. Fan girling here. Sure thing. Well, first of all, um, I'm flattered that y'all listen to Living Corporate. It's interesting. Like Living Corporate started as a single podcast, and um, the vision was for it to be like a monthly podcast by the people that I started it with, and then people drop off. You know, consistency is a hard thing. That's another probably another pile for another day. But mm-hmm. point is, is that I always had a dream that Living Corporate would be like a network right and that like living corporate itself would air multiple times a week but there would be other podcasts and other pieces of media that really again created a network of media that centers and amplifies black and brown people at work right and so i guess backing up a little bit my family so both sides of my family um came from mississippi both sets my grandparents were um uh were sharecroppers picking cotton um, and on my mom's side of the family, I'm the first man to start and graduate from a four-year university. My cousin, um, Chris, is the first man to graduate from gradu- the first man to graduate from college in our family. Period. I'm the first man to start and graduate to to graduate start and graduate from a four-year university. Um, and then on my dad's side of the family, I'm a second-generation reader, uh, meaning like my dad taught my grandfather how to read, right? And still, like my grandfather is not the best reader like my 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 dad and my uncles help him with his contracts he does he got into real estate later in life and so anyway all of that to say is when i graduated from the university of houston i didn't have like this organic network of like neighbors and cousins and uncles to like get me a dope job or like talk to me how to navigate these white majority space i just learned on my own and um i came into um i came into the corporate world in the hr function which is majority white women very passive aggressive, very toxic, very harmful. Um, still in therapy, actually. Outside oh, note, yeah, go to therapy. It's cool. <laughs> okay, like, therapy is great. Like you should go to it. It's a good thing. Um, all of that to be all of that being said, um, like I looked up and I was like, man, like it would be great if I had like, like I had I was blessed to run into a couple of people that look like me to give me little nuggets of wisdom, mm-hmm. but everybody doesn't have that, and my profile isn't that rare. Straight black man from the south first generation professional, blah, 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 blah. Like there's millions of people like me in America. So like, what would it look like to democratize, flatten access to these conversations to really navigate these white supremacist majority spaces um, in a really just, again, free and accessible way. And that's where Living Corporate came from. So again, now, now I'm back to what I said at the beginning. Started as a single podcast and we've expanded. So we have we're now we now have several podcasts. We you know we have over ten thousand listeners a week on Living Corporate, the Living Corporate podcast alone. We have 
web shows and blogs. We've interviewed now over, um, we've had over a thousand pods, um, over a, over a hundred web shows, over sixty blogs, some white papers. We've done some incredible. Uh, campaigns with Pfizer and LiveRamp and Accenture and other brands, um, all to just center and amplify Black people at work. I love it. I was going to tell you, that's why I started listening to it, because, you know, I'm in the startup spaces. So I'm the only, and I've been at places where everybody was the only, to be fair. Mm -hmm. Like, all of us are like, have a different story. <clears throat> and so, but like you said, I knew I wasn't the only. And it's not just about I think we saw, you know, wait, it's a historical week this week in seeing um, Ketanji Brown Jackson. But then people are like, oh, is that how they treat like black women at work? And it's like, y'all didn't know that? This is not, yes. this didn't, it was not invented this week. No. Right? And so mm -hmm. it was one of those things where you know how you feel and you know why you're feeling that way. And you, you, you're trying to be protective. You want to talk to other people who understand those shared experiences. And so thank you for doing that and opening it, that up. And I think it's amazing. I'm seeing the growth has been amazing and seeing the people um, and the various hosts and people that, and it's funny because like, then you start stalking people, you know, they don't know me. I know them. I, I can't, I have to prepare now that we're going out of the house again. I have to send, you know, okay, Vonda, you don't know me. I know you. Like, up to Vonda Page. If I yes. see you in public, I'll give you a hug. Don't run. This is what I look like. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> well, yes. you know, right? Yes, like, yes, hundred percent. And it was like also for me, like with Vonda Page, it's like the break room, especially starting in like you know going back knowing that we didn't have. I've worked at home for ten years, so I've always looked for like water cooler conversations, mm -hmm. but then you feel like you have um, this group of people that you can listen, that understand, and, and it feels safe. Sometimes with the blog, with, even with our blog and other blogs, this is the only place where people feel safe, and I know right. you've probably seen that. Um, yeah. I'd love to know more about, just because it was such a historical week, and I know we were talking about women and professional women um, recently throughout Living Corporate as well. I wanted to get your, your feedback on what you've been seeing, um, the response like within the last two days, besides really happy. But some people are like, you know, breathing. Some right. people are like, the impact has generational trauma. Of course, I'm watching in that process. So I wanted to get some feedback from you on that. I mean, first of all, it's just such a there's so like there's so many things you could talk about right so like and I'll, I'll start by saying i'm not going to be comprehensive in my analysis i'll speak i'll speak to the the limited perspective i do have you know i'll say that you know i i, I mean I, I get conflicted like when i see um when i see events where they're like we're historically white spaces where we've been actively excluded from finally get a sp an opportunity to get there and, and the celebration that goes with that. And I try to be empathetic to the reality of one, I'm one, I benefit from the patriarchy as a, as a black man. So like, I recognize that, you know, I do suffer under the mantle of white supremacy and patriarchy, but I also benefit from patriarchy um, still as a man, even though I don't benefit in the same degrees as white or more white adjacent men. Right. So it's a comp anyway, that's a separate conversation. The point is, is that like, I struggle because I'm looking at, I'm like, okay, this is great. Like, this is great, like full stop. It is great that we have representation um, of someone, a black woman in a space who isn't um, anti-black, right? Who isn't, who doesn't hate us, right? Like, you know, we had third, we had third good Marshall. I was like, yo, he's like, you know, you like read third right. good Marshall. It's like, like a bastion of like black, just like represent like like you talk about someone representing the, the quote unquote black community it's like yo i will take like th if i have like you know if you pick you doing like a pickup game it's like uh i'm gonna take uh third good marshall like you say, <laughs> you're gonna pick him early you're gonna pick him and then you're right. gonna of course you're gonna pick him okay uh you know you you know you're, you're gonna pick um you know, you know you're gonna, like he's up he's up there and so then to back door with you know with clarence thomas is like damn okay maybe, right maybe this whole like you know, 
desegregation thing wasn't the best idea. Maybe you shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't be up here. Like you make us look awful. Like it's crazy. You taking us, like you're taking us back, not Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. You're you're literally taking us back with the legislation that you champion. So again, um, oh, Paul Robeson. Paul Robeson, another person I would take in my pickup if I, you know, like he's okay. Anyway, the point is, um, like the it's great. It's also I'm I'm conflicted because I'm like, dang, I mean. One is such a hyper exclusive space. So it's just like, dang, right. right? It's just like, okay. Um, and my wife and I've talked about it, right? I have a daughter, she's two years old. And, you know, people, and there are people out here like, you know, they don't really necessarily like, they're like, it's great that we have a black rep- a sister up there. It's great that she isn't like a white supremacist. It's great that like, you know, she has a, like, she's of course like, she arguably might be the most qualified judge ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, it's like, okay, man, I really, I, maybe, maybe, maybe she can create and be the, like the Jackie Robinson to really help open the door for like, rat, like, cool, I'm going to say radical judge, because I want I want to see radical black liberation theology holding judges in the Supreme Court. I do like, that's what I would love to see. Right. And so it's like, man, you know, it's, and so I, I like that's that's where I that's where I'm conflicted. It's like I want to celebrate. I want to like I also want to recognize like what it really is in the context of like the political power she holds because of when you think about the balance of the Supreme Court. Um, and then I'll say the other thing to your point is, yeah, like I watched it. I watched the hearings. It was triggering. It was triggering to watch like her being talked over and demeaned by people and her her intelligence being questioned by people who don't know what they're doing and don't know what they're talking about. I mean, look, I'm a black man in tech. Like I experience this every single day. Like, you know, you, you know, she's, she said something, she'll say something like 20, like, like for 20 minutes, you come back and you ask her a question. It feels like gaslighting. Like, did you not hear it? She said, she already answered your, your dumbass right. question four or five times ago. <laughs> had you listened, it's insulting, like shut up. Right. If you would just listen. And so it, it's that's triggering like i'm low-key triggering myself right now i think about like the idea of like so often in those hearings you heard people just ask questions to confirm their own biases they weren't Mm -hmm. asking questions to actually learn or have a conversation or progress anything they had a they had a whole little game they wanted to play with you by asking you these stupid stupid inane asinine asa 10 asa 11 questions you know what i mean (laughs) and so like I just ask like, eleven. Ask eleven. I want that on a shirt. <laughs> it's and like and so you know as I as I and it's, and so my, I think my you say like kind of like the last couple of days I think the last as I as I kind of wrap this up I'll just say my hope is that to your point people really grasp that like there are um, Katanji Brown Jacksons everywhere we work um, and <gasps> like we have an opportunity to listen to them amplify them respect them and also just shut the hell up sometimes you ain't got to talk all the time you know what i mean be quiet let them talk um and so you know that's that's my take i i love that i think that along with that what i get i get really emotional and just so you know i'm in phoenix katie is in a different room i'm at katie's house um this week and i was like bawling and i could not stop bawling and I was like, I think I might start crying again. And the big thing that brought to the table really is part of that that voice, those voices and knowing that the voice is in the room and how this is the beginning, but then also the reality of what she took on. Um, Like, I think I've always tried to make spaces. You try to make spaces. We know a lot of people that try to make spaces for black and brown people, but we also know what it's like to be the first and the only, and you that you're not just accepting the job. You're accepting the threats. You're accepting the hate. This is a lifetime appointment. And I know that this is a big thing, but part of the reason why I wanted to talk about it was because it's a job. It's a job. It's a job. And these are their coworkers. Yes. And you talk about dealing with conflict. Yeah. There's conflict going in. 100%. You know, and it's so interesting because like, that's often the experience of black folks um, who who enter in these high ranking positions. They often inherit a mess, right? Like, you know, when you compare like high ranking black folks um, who come into positions compared to like, you know, white folks in positions, and this, like I think about corporate America, 
if a black if there's a black person who's coming in as the ceo like that company is in trouble they like they are inheriting a mess like you know there's a bunch of tension and extra nonsense that they're going to have to put up with and do the white folks typically white folks typically they're set up for success they have a portfolio book business they got the relationships already handed out they've been groomed for this for a while black folks have to kind of claw and fight and climb and justify to get to inherit a mess right you're making and me so, think of mcdonald's remember mcdonald's when the guy come in and it was an absolute mess there was there, mess. there was no way you were going to win there's no mess. way yeah okay continue Sorry. No, 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 no. There's no, no, please don't apologize. No, I, I, that's, that's really it. It's just, and you're right. It's a job. And I, you know, it's interesting. I was reading an article about like, I was, this was some years ago, but it was like in the Atlantic and they were just talking about like the dynamics of um, the Supreme court. And it's like, a lot of people don't realize like in a lot of ways, those Supreme, that Supreme court job, it has the same politics and stuff as any other job, right? Like the need to settle conflict and relationships and, you know, if we know there's a big decision coming up and you know there's someone who's going to be the the um, the deciding vote or the deciding decision, um, you know, like how you, you know, have to be cool with them. And, you know, there's in groups and out groups. There's all of that. Like, it's a job. So I, I don't have anything to say because I, I agree, Jackie. I agree. And just in case people didn't know, when I was talking about um, McDonald's, some people may not know this between 2012 and 2015, Don Thompson was the uh, first, served as the first black president and CEO of McDonald's, three years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't know, you know, anyway, wanted to bring that up because that's the same thing. You are inheriting a mess and we've seen it and we keep seeing it, even, even in black spaces. You can see mm -hmm. it like at Essence Magazine, you know, it's like, oh, you know what? Let's try, let's try something new. Right. Because <laughs> what we're doing is not working. Right. And then it, it is inheriting uh, a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. Um, yeah. But I think some people don't recognize, like, it was a mess and it was triggering, but it was also, like, Tuesday. Right. And that's, that. well, see, that's the other, th like, to your point, right, I think, like, Black folks are at the bottom. So, like, you know, um, dysfunction and, uh, and oppression harm confusion um all the other words like folks being um what's the word um i don't know like hypocrisy dealing just dealing with you know having to guard yourself from exploitation these are like just common things this is part these things that go hand in hand with the black experience not because of black not because of your blackness but because of white supremacy right right and so like you know, you're right. It is just a Tuesday. Like, I mean, I'm thinking about like my days recently. I'm having, you know, it's part of just being alive. Like, it's like how much do you have to guard and protect yourself and like document things and have all the conversation you need to have and, you know, to, to, to survive. Like, that's just, and that's, again, like that's a function of white supremacy. Um, and yeah, it's often just a Tuesday or any other day that end in Y. I think go oh go ahead Katie. No, I was just gonna say I think that that is something that that people don't recognize that we do have to have those challenges. And I always think it's funny when people are coming out in the space of how people react to either what I posted or something that I said. And you know, like oh, is it really like that? And you're like, you know, it's just funny because it's like I've been black my whole life. Right. So I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like I remember one time somebody had contacted me and they were like, oh, aren't you mad about that panel? Um, it's all white men on that panel. I was like, I'm used to it. Is it bothering you? This is my life. Is, is, that, is it bothering you? OK, do something about it. No, I right. didn't notice. I was like, no, nope, I didn't notice at all. No. Right. So. Mm -hmm. But I think that's why it goes back to why we why it's important to have those spaces and to have these conversations. Um, and I do think it was a masterclass of uh, well, the things that we have to deal with every day. There is some yes. interesting things. I'll put them in the show notes. They did it. I think it was the New York Times pulled like five black women from Harvard and just got their reactions. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. It's amazing to watch. But it does, I just think about, I think part of the reason I was brought to tears was just knowing that when you see it like that space, you can never say, 
when you grow up black, and this is for all of the listeners who haven't grown up black, when you grow up black, that you know your role in your space, you know your lane, people put you in these lanes. And so you say, I can be this, but I can't be that. I can do this, but I can't do that. Right. So we talk about representation matters, but you, but I think people who are not black don't understand that you know that you can't be a Supreme Court justice, mm-hmm. right? Like it was the same thing, like I'm not going to be able to be president or I'm not going to be able to be mm-hmm. this or that. And so the represent the part of the tears comes from there will always be that space. And let's say 30, 40 years to all these other little girls that can say, oh, that is possible. Where, you know, in the in we've always thought those things were impossible. And you look at Katanji and the like, where she because we're on a first name basis, because we're best friends. And um, when you see her, you know, we are part we have been part of several transformations. We're nowhere near, but we've lived to see things that we thought would never happen. And so I love to say, you know, my ancestors who had his dreams, the things mm-hmm. that are going on I, it would pro- probably seems like a blip. Right. But there's like yes. it is the ancestors wildest dreams. You know, it's you know, and for me, it's like I remember I, I didn't. I, so. I teared up, but I definitely, I definitely got upset. I remember like just specifically during Ted Cruz's questioning. And then I definitely like, remember I had to just like, I stopped watching. There was this clip where he he said something like our baby's racist or something. And and she said, Senator, she kind of paused and like looked up. Big, heavy sigh. (laughs) Big, heavy sigh. It was just like, what is this? Right? Like there's so much in that sigh of just like, like what are we actually like what are we actually doing like what kind of game is this like what is this like what what are we like what is like and so that's where for me i i i certainly felt and again like there are so many mo- moments of that where i just felt very much so seen and just felt like uh, a person in arms with her in just the experience of having to justify your qualifications amongst people who are incompetent, who, who, who like, and not to sound like elitist or snobby, but like, are not in any position to question her, you know? No, fully. And I should mention Zach and I are both Texans. Yes. You're outside. Of, are you in Houston proper or outside? I mean, I'm in Houston. So, um, Katie, being in Arizona, we laugh all the time because, you know, there's much drama within our states. Sure. And I saw Ted Cruz, and that, that's the other part where you're like, you know, I can like really be mad at him up there, but he's coming home. Like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt when I saw him. I was like, oh my God, you again. When <laughs> is this going to be done? He is, he is the worst. He is the worst. Um, but yeah. So I'm going to switch gears a bit. Who, is- who has been your, uh, I won't say favorite because that's, that might not be nice. Who has been your most memorable recent podcast guest? Mm, okay, most recent. Okay, so so the 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 extra qualifier or very or um yeah filter on most recent. Most recent memorable. Most recent memorable. Um, right. Like <laughs> it's just it's about. tough. No, it's just it's tough. Like straight up. Like you think about like all the you know all of the guests like. As long, I am trying to think about like who I want to who I want to say in this moment. Yeah. Um. You know what? I, I'll say um, that I that I had a conversation recently, and it hasn't it hasn't been published yet. Um. Uh, but uh, with Michelle Kim. Uh, mm-hmm. Michelle Kim, who is um, she's an author. She's also the founder of Awaken Co. Um, an incredible person, and. Um, I, rem- you know, what I appreciate so often, you know, I come into these conversations oftentimes really exhausted, like mentally and spiritually, because I just, again, like I am also like in these, I, I'm also in these systems that I, that I talk about um, mm-hmm. that drain me and that, and by some degree exploit me. Um, and so it's, it's encouraging when I, I can have conversations that feel gentle, um, that feel gracious to me and caring to me um like that those always like I always walk away just feeling like dang that really I really appreciated like 
I really appreciated that. Like it was like, it's like, a, it's, it's an extended part of my therapy. Um, and so I'll say that, you know, that that's the one that's been, that I will say is most memorable, who that is very recent. Um, as I think about, you know, our conversation, we were talking, we talked, we, 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 we actually covered a lot of ground, but we talked a lot about just like internalized oppression. We talked about like just this current climate of diversity, equity, inclusion. And we talked about, we talked about what does meaningful impact look like um, to really create equity in the workplace. And so it was just a dope discussion. And I really like, I'm a, I'm a Michelle fan. Like I like her as a person. Yes, I do as well. She is amazing. Um, no, that I'm excited to hear that one then. Uh, she's just great. And every time I've heard her speak, obviously her book was phenomenal. And uh, she just, she is, I love the way you describe that. Just like you, you come out of the conversation you like, oh, I'm smarter. I'm better. I feel good. Everything's good. Like that's just, those are the type of people you want to, to want to, want to chat with a lot. Um, what's coming up for you? What is, what, what's on your, on your radar? What's coming up for you that uh, we should know about that our listeners should know about. Yeah. You know what? I think we're getting close. So I think I can talk about it a little bit more. Um, oh, and when is this, when is this going live? When is it getting published? Um, three ish weeks from now. Oh, great. Okay, cool. So, um, you're not going to release any <laughs> proprietary <laughs> information. <laughs> uh, uh, actually tomorrow, Zach. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no. What um, should we be buying? Let us no. know. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, so, so I'm excited about the fact that Living Corporate is, uh, we're going, we're actually, you know, and this has been going on for a while. Like we've been talking about, okay, we have this library of content, right? Like, and, I, and I'll say like, I don't, and I say this like what, uh, I say this not like looking to puff up my chest or pick a fight, but I will box if I need to, is I don't know there's another platform that has as deep a catalog of content focused on centering and amplifying historically excluded groups that we do. Um, and that has so many brands talking on the record about their own challenges and how uh, we what we need to be doing right to like really do something different and better. Um, and so the question I've always, I've continued to ask myself and and ask our team is like, what does it look like to just optimize this content, right? Like, I don't know if everyone knows that we have a conversation with Michael C. Bush, who's a CEO, great place to work, and we talked about the role that data is going to play in the next decade around DEI. I don't know if people, if everyone knows we had a conversation with Nicole Hannah Jones and talked about like her own journey and attacks from all these incompetent white men. I don't know if people know about these conversations we've had over the past four years. And like, you know, you talk about it's, we've been, we've been doing this for four years and we drop content damn near every day mm -hmm. across a myriad of different of media channels. Mm -hmm. in our network and so I don't I don't think it's even fair to expect everyone to catch everything because there's so much stuff mm -hmm. and so anyway I've, I've just been continually challenging like myself and our team think about what does it look like to like bring that content to the forefront because some of it so much of this content is evergreen like it just hasn't really aged poorly or aged at all and so mm -hmm. um, what I'm excited about what's coming up what's next for me is and what's next for the corporate is we're actually going through a complete website uh, redesign where um, you're going to log on to Living Corporate. You're going to be encouraged to create a profile where you select content and topics that you're really interested in. And then you're going to get a personalized curated experience where we push content to you from our library. Um, and I'm really excited about that. And we're going to have a job board where we work with brands to post their jobs on our job board to encourage and really push those opportunities to black and brown folks, historically excluded folks. Um, and so those like that, that work um, and just the work I've been doing with our, um, with our web design studio to like really bring this to life. I'm really excited about that. And I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm so, so excited about what that's going to mean for our audience because yes. like, I think there'd be, there's going to be people who've listened to Living Corporate for years and who are going to be like, yo, I didn't even catch this episode. Mm -hmm. So, well, I, I, so I have been kind of scrolling through and I, I, one of your earlier interviews with, with, was with Aubrey Blanche. Oh yeah. Who, you yeah. know, a friend of ours, but it looks like you just interviewed her again very recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, I had not listened to that one. So I'm putting that on my list, but See? it's a good point. Yeah. I mean, 
and she's someone also that you know you can sit for hours and just learn as you're just listening right. on go tell us all the things <laughs> and that's what i mean and it's and it's like and here's the thing like and it's interesting like because podcasts y'all have y'all know the game is like so many people like they judge their podcast or their data by like how many listeners they get like, right. per, per episode right or like oh they drop an episode a week and so it's like oh hey we got so many listeners like don't downloads whatever this week and like, you know, typically on your average podcast, your podcast is not living for years. Like you post it that week and then you post the next episode and that's it. Like right. for living corporate though, like I'm looking at our data, you know, people are still downloading content from like years ago, right? Yes. Like, so people are treating living corporate like a learning library. And so it's like, okay, how do we optimize and maximize that? And so to your point, Katie, like in the future, you're gonna go to Living Corporate's website, you're gonna be, oh snap, I'm, and you're gonna be able to click a button and add it to your playlist on your profile, right? So you can listen to it and check it out later. Like, so it's just gonna be a much more interactive and communal experience. And so I, I'm really excited about it. Yes, shout out to Aubrey. Um, I'm a huge fan. Um, she comes on and talks about you know her job and the role of data and DEI. And yes, she I love how she keeps it real. She's a bit of a provocateur, a room a shape table shaker like us. Mm -hmm. Um, and I love that. I, I love that too. I mean, I have gotten to the point where I like LinkedIn. I've spent most of my time there since my last job transition. So I get all of my access, <laughs> like all of my access to everything is there. Um, and, but you're right. And, and this is something that we talk about it in my workspace where like when you're helping people, a lot of times they can see one episode, right? They get excited, but they, they, it leads to something else. And so I'm glad that you're saying about signing up and having that like curated experience, because if you are interested in this, these are some other episodes, blog posts, whatever that you might want to be, you might be interested in. Um, and I also think that it's good to have those multiple voices. I know for like Katie and I are not afraid to have difficult conversations, but I know some people are looking for specifically, they want to know how to navigate within those within the space because they want to do something and don't know what to do. And so right. they, they you know, latch on to one episode versus the other. Right, right. And I think that's the other thing too, is like, you know, when you talk about even our content. Now, I'm going to say this, Living Corporate really doesn't create content like that. We literally, <laughs> I literally will go on Living Corporate and I'll say things lit to make sure that you're not comfortable. Like So like, as an example, like I've said, you know that um white folks made crack and unconscious bias in the same lab right like it's like i'll say things like on purpose to make sure that you're never hyper comfortable because we literally make content to deep that centers and amplifies historically excluded people we're not out here trying to make content to keep white people comfortable but to that end we also do have content that's focused on growing as an ally really what is an ally really mean decentering yourself as a majority person, power sharing, you know, sponsorship versus mentorship and, and all those different things. So we've curated our content in a way for you to, you know, get an experience that you might be looking for while also recognizing that we don't pull punches in the content that we create. Well, and I don't think I mean comfortable when I say that. I'm just saying there's stick it, it sticks out. Right. One hundred percent. No. Yeah. Absolutely. I got you. And so, if this is interesting, then this should be interesting, and yeah. this should be interesting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And 100%. I think sometimes being here, I do think sometimes we have those real conversations, and so some people are like, "Well, how do you have those real conversations?" Mm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, it's like I just I don't like life is so short like i have a ch so i have a child like i said i have a, a two-year-old and like you know there's nothing that just reminds you that you're gonna die than like having a kid and so like i my time is valuable like is why i say that like i value my time it's yeah. like i'm not going to be up here talking about some little hoardy twitty bullshit with you like if we're gonna have a conversation about my experience and like how things need to improve and be better than like we're gonna have that conversation and if we're not gonna talk about it in a really in an authentic way or in a way that honors my own values and who i am as a person then we're just not going to have the conversation like what's the point like you right. can go anywhere you can go like <laughs> right. that's the whole th the other thing about it is like this but it's so noisy right now like since right. since george floyd was murdered in 20 there's so many people out there trying to have the conversation expand the dialogue or whatever the case is it's like yo you can go if like I, like i'm comfortable knowing that living corporate's content is not going to be for everybody right mm -hmm. like 
so you're free to go listen to like some really pleasant conversations spoken like at an NPR tone like this. <laughs> the um uh the doctor of sociology at Cambridge. Like you can go do that. Like that's not us. And I'm not gonna waste my time doing that. You're right. You're right. And that's I, I will say, I think that's part of the narrative that we've seen that space going up too. A lot of people trying to have difficult conversations, but then we've also seen a lot of pieces of self-care, um, how to advocate, um, adv advocate for yourself, or having understanding like racial trauma, understanding different things and various products where other people didn't recognize it. Because one of the things that happened to me, and I think it, it, this was before uh, George Floyd, but it because we're in the HR space, right? So I'm trying to explain to somebody we were talking about, they were asking me, you know, about specifically about work. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, in the middle of a live show, I was like, I'm not talk talking anymore to explain how white people can deal with black people. Like, like this no. is the last time. And she goes, because okay. she was like, do you have anything to say? And it hit me. I was like, no, I just want to talk to the, to the black and brown people that are listening right now. Like right. you're enough. And if anybody's having this conversation and feel like this is necessary to move forward, you need to leave. Right. 100%. I mean, it's so funny because like I'll, I've gone on different platforms and I've said this before. It's like, you know, white people, we don't need your advice. Like, we need your things. Like, you know, we don't like, and it was like, well, what do you mean? It's like, I need your things. Like, I need your money. I need your access. I need your social networks. I don't actually need you to tell me how to be better like that that whole narrative is like white yeah. supremacist right it's like oh man like you it's, it's and like it's so it's so insidious because like so many of these dei narratives corporate and otherwise are like hey white people let me try to be an ally so you can go fix black people and it's right. like no, that's not what it actually it is like like black people don't need to be fixed like right. we've been navigating and surviving in this world and thriving for hundreds of years right in spite of blatant abuse, blatant exploitation, explicit oppression, and 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 non-explicit e e oppression, B disparate impact all over the place, right? Legislative uh, impact, all kinds of things that have been happening to us. So we don't actually need that. It's insulting and it's racist, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, what we do need is for white folks to just share, share your stuff. The stuff that you shouldn't even have, give it back and share it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I do. Like, like my like my daughter was oh my daughter was here. My I'm daughter sorry. was no. It's so okay. is it me? Did I do some? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. And uh, maybe it'll be after hours. I know Katie knows. I'm, it's true. Where my brain's yeah, going. No, it's it, you're speaking truth, and that's why we're chuckling because it's like, yeah, it, exactly that. Well, so we were so like my so like my like quick story is like so my daughter again she's two, she has um, cousins, and two of them came over. They're both boys, um, super cute, super fun, and they are they are boys. They be jumping around, they playing on stuff. Um, and Emery right now is an only child, so she shares at daycare. But at home, she's kind of like, well, yo, this is my, and it was, and so they came over and there's tons of toys. Like there's toys, like we have so many toys and she just couldn't get over seeing her cousins play with toys that she's only used to see, be playing with, right? She just couldn't deal with it. So at a certain point, it was like, she was trying to take the toys and and so and, and and they were just they were like okay because because they they know how to share because they deal with each other all day every day so they're they hand each other they hand um emory the toys so now emory has a bunch of toys in her hand just like walking around with a bunch of toys and i'm like emory you can't even play with all these toys like give the block back give the train back let them play right now and like again a silly analogy but like that's how it feels sometimes like you see white folks like they just have so much stuff and it's like you don't even you wouldn't even miss it if it was gone like stop and you know and it's like i and no and, and like with my with my daughter it's like it's not that you need to teach no they know how to play with the toys just let them play with it right and that's the thing is like that's how it feels sometimes like in this 
on this playground of life or equity or whatever. I don't know where I'm at with this metaphor at this point, but it's just like, <laughs> just, just let us play. Like, like leave us alone, right? But, uh, give us, uh, give us the things about the way. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I just want to no, It just made me think because I have two adults, right? One's 19 and one's 21. Yeah. And I, um, you know, hot take. I told my kids not to share. Yeah. You can have it when they're done. Mm -hmm. Don't steal my kids joy because you want something. And now I'm supposed to give it to you and drop it because you asked. That's fair. I will give it to you when I'm ready to give it to you because it's mine. Period. And that's, and that's you do fair. not have to give it away just because of that same mindset. Granted, now that they're 21, <laughs> maybe I pushed it a little too much. <laughs> But, 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 no, there's value with, in that. You know, with three roommates, but the big thing is always being able to be, to find your voice, to be able to advocate for yourself and speak, have your voice and be clear on how you're feeling. Because people are confused. Sharing is very confusing concept. It's a, it is, it is, it is a confusing concept. I think, and I think my pain point is, it's not that they were, and like, just to close this up is, they weren't asking, <laughs> they weren't asking for toys that Emery was playing with. They were touch. They were trying to play with toys that were like, uh, like that were Emery wasn't even thinking about, right? Yes. And that's and I'm like, okay, Emery, you weren't even touching the. To this is an issue of you share. Just back up. Like, come on, you you were playing with like five different toys. There's 80 different toys over here. They're gonna choose a couple. Like, you know what I mean? So anyway, I do. I I, it makes me laugh. It makes me laugh, and it especially makes me laugh. I think it's adorable listening to you talk about Emery. I think it's that's adorable and sweet. And like I said, I have two adults, and so. We're gonna do a recap. We'll do a recap. Oh man, I look forward. To, I look forward to that. It is amazing I watching them go through all this. My oldest is about to go take a job in New York City. I think I say it on every podcast now because they're going to be moving in July. So, oh, congratulations! Um, and it's like, oh my gosh, I think, I think we kind of did it. Like, <laughs> I think, okay, okay. Yeah. Now we now what are we gonna do? I don't know. Learn how to or something. Oh man. You know, it's interesting you say that. Like I drop Emery off at daycare and she'll, you know, she just she just she just walks off. Like and she walk like we'll we'll walk inside and then she'll walk into the little room. Mm -hmm. And it just makes me sad. I'm like, dang, we're gonna be doing this for like like eventually yeah. like you're gonna walk and you're gonna be like gone. Yeah. You know? So But they're never really gone. Yes. That's we'll have that conversation later. I'm looking well, I'm I'm honestly I, I welcome that at this point because it's sad. Yeah. So Okay, my friend. <laughs> All right. So this is the part of the podcast where we talk about what is the one thing you want folks to take away, uh, to make note of, to to hear from this podcast. Mm. Yo, white, white. Next, so make sure you're you're going. Yeah. You're, okay. It. Sorry. Yeah. Zach, back to you. <laughs> White people, give me your things. That's 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 what I want you to take away. Okay, from all right. White people are giving Zach the things. Perfect. Yes. Jackie, save some for that? me. That's that. Like, save some things for me. Um, <laughs> the other thing that I want sharing is thing. caring. Maybe this is, caring. Is where, this is where the sharing comes in between the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want somebody to. I want people to say. Um, I want to say something that I've said in the past, like we've seen this narrative, bring your whole self to work. Um, bringing my whole self isn't safe. And it makes me go back to thinking about having that narrative of what diversity looks like. It's only going to be, I can't, I need to create the environment. I need to be able to be safe to be myself. It's not about you. I'm going through something too, through this process. I've been black my whole life. Before all of this happened, before people decided to teach these classes, there's different situations that we're going through. And you have to be there to nurture everyone at work. And until you can nurture everyone at work, don't ask people to bring their whole self because you're not ready. You're not prepared and you're creating more toxic um, environments. That's what that got me thinking because that, I mean, that is the worst piece. And that's why I decided to like get back in this work because you touch more people to be able to help move it forward when you have a real narrative. I think that was like 34 things, but that was the thing that stood out for me, just that thought process. 37, thanks. 37, thank you, 37 things. Um, I'm gonna go back to something you mentioned um, about you know white people listening to the Living Corporate podcast, as I, I do uh, consider myself white some days. Um, although right now we're in Arizona getting tan, so there's that, uh, no. So, uh, being uncomfortable is okay. 
Mm-hmm. And, and it like, I think that's the piece that white people shy away from that discomfort and they shy away from the listening to voices that are not Eurocentric, patriarchy, whatever you want to call it. And we need to start listening to those voices and we need to be okay with being uncomfortable. I think that's a piece that like just continues to resonate as we're having these conversations is we've caused discomfort for so many and we're allowed to be uncomfortable too. Mm. Um, so yeah, Zach, thank you very much for joining us. We truly appreciate it. Um, and, uh, for the audience, if you are, if you are not subscribed to the living corporate podcast, go do that right now and go listen to all the things. Um, this is Katie Van Horn. And this is Jackie Clayton. And this is the inclusive AF podcast. Bye. Bye.